And so, so we chose it, though, because the work is important. The work is something that's really hard. And this work, that's something that I believe we could be very good at. And so, so those are the reasons why we selected it. Now it's going to be a very large market, and you say that there's a lot of entrants. But the fact of the matter is, um, right now, there are very few uh, solutions in the marketplace. And DrivePX is not designed to be a demo. It's designed to be a production. And if we are the only production platform in the world today running on Model S. It's just started shipping this last month. And my sense is that we're going to be ahead of the, ahead of the world uh, in shipping production for, for real level four self-driving cars probably by about three years. And so I think a lot of people are talking about it now because you know it's it's surely going to be a very large market. Yeah, go ahead. Excuse me. Um, I guess the phrase of like <coughs> Nvidia transforming into an AI company is kind of interesting to me. I just wonder how much of that you view as, as really true. Um, does it mean we sort of leave some of the thinking of that sort of behind and just prioritize and kind of bring the resource output to a lot more? We have a lot of people working on AI. Um, that that is that is uh, surely surely the case. Um, uh, you know, when I think about when I think about these the work that we do, they all have one thing in common. Number one, they're all based on GPU computing. We select work that we do not based on whether we think the market is going to be big or not. And you guys, you guys have you know people that have known me for a long time. We've selected the work that we do always based on the three things that I said to this nice gentleman just now. Number one, is the work important to do? Is it hard to do? And it's work that we are uniquely good at doing. We select work to do that is consistent with our core competencies, what we're supposed to be focused on. Almost everything that we do is based on GPU computing. And so we, we work on four different areas, as you guys know. Gaming, virtual reality, AI data centers, or HPC, and then self-driving cars. We really only do these four things. We don't do anything else. It just turns out that these four things happens to be really cool, and they're really impactful. Um, and it's taken a long time for it to become, if you will, real. And the reason for that is because it's hard. But they're all based on one fundamental thing of GPU computing, and they, they share a couple of... They share a couple of, of, um, uh, of capabilities. One is related to visual, and one is related to uh, intelligence. One is able, related to artificial intelligence. And so maybe, maybe, um, maybe someday uh, somebody will discover that, that um, uh, imagination, which is computer graphics, and intelligence, which is you know, AI, deep learning, maybe that they're cousins in some way, that the computation of these two problems are, are highly related. That our ability to imagine uh, using our brain and, and our ability to solve problems using our brain are, very, are rather similar. But, you know, I don't have a philosophical link linkage between the two, but the two problems are very similar. It's, it's hard to believe to think that you would happen to decide to invest in this market heavily years ago, and then it happens to be something that is so uh, booming in this space. And how, how are you thinking? We would, we would always work on things that are important. And so if it's important, the first question is, is an important problem. I, I think self-driving cars, uh, autonomous vehicles is an important problem. Uh, I think robotics is an important problem. And, and it's a very hard problem. And it's a problem that, that a company like NVIDIA would be very good at solving. Because the solution would involve visual computing. The solution would involve artificial intelligence. And so it, it made sense for us to work on it, even if it took a long time. And so I guess, I guess way to, the way to think about that is, yes, we absolutely <coughs> foresaw it coming. That's why we believe it's important. But it took a long time. It took quite a long time. I mean, it took, it took 10 years. 10 years is a fairly long time to work on something. But if you enjoy working on something, 10 years comes and goes.
Jansen, what do you think about reports of accidents and even one death in the case of self-driving? I think the Tesla incident is the most prominent. Yeah, really, really unfortunate. And and I think I think there's no question there's no question that the the uh, the technology has um, uh, has much much uh, to advance. And and I think that that's exactly the reason why we're dedicating so much R and D into it. Um, I I think that that um, I, the problem of self driving cars is an AI problem, and that AI problem is a really really hard one. And I I just don't think that that um, I, that the work is done yet, and that's why that's why we're all working so hard at it. You know, but it's it's obviously a very important problem to go solve. Yes, sir. Related to that. You know, one of the challenges I think that the market is facing is that you've got a bunch of companies, yourself included, many others, really touting autonomous driving as kind of here now, and yet also saying, but it's not here now. So I think it gets very confusing to reconcile when is it really here, you know, not one or two cars or even 40 cars, but, you know, tens of millions of cars. And... <coughs> You know, I would argue, I think, Tesla actually is confusing things even more as to you know, how they define what they're doing. So from your position, you know, how, how should people think about that? How should we reconcile reality versus the future, what we can do, what we can't, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, um, all of you can control the situation quite well. Just don't write about it. <laughs> and, and, but obviously, obviously, the reason why we, we talk about it um, the reason why people are interested in it is because transportation is such a big deal. It is the fabric of our industry. It's the fabric of society, right? The internet moves information, but transportation moves things. You know, we need things to live, and so, so, so uh, I think it's it's the fabric of society. It's obviously very interesting, and and of course, automobiles also connect with a romantic side of us, and and so we we love cars. Um, <clears throat> I think everyone would agree. It's with fun that. to write about. Yeah. And now, now I think you're, you had a serious question in there that which was which was related to to um, uh, which one? Of, how do I know how far along my car is? I actually don't feel that most people are confused about the capabilities of their car. Like just because they read about it in the news yesterday, they don't go home and say, "Car drive." You know, they 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 know that their cars don't drive. Um, <clears throat> And, and I, I drive a Model S, and um, I, I can tell you it, it, is, it helps me every single day. It improves um, the safety uh, for me. Yeah, and I think that's true. I guess the question is assisted driving versus autonomous. And it seems like everybody's focused on autonomous when assisted stuff seems like it's more practical and more useful. Yeah, and in fact, maybe what you're saying is, is what I'm saying as well, which is, uh, and, and I said yesterday that I, I believe a car, an autonomous autonomous vehicle, the first thing it's going to do is plan its route. Don't forget that this computer, this car actually has a computer inside. It's connected to the Internet. And so you say, you know, I want to go here. It's going to plan its route, just like a plane does, just like, a, you know, just like we all do. Okay, we plan our route. And out of that route that is planned, parts of it, it might be able, or all of it, it might be able to do autonomously. And if it could do it confidently... Then it does it, and it's going to do it really, really well. Okay? If there are parts of that route that it cannot do autonomously, it will tell you. And there's a lot of different ways to tell you. There's a lot of different ways to tell you. And, and what we're saying is, even when it's not driving for you, it should be looking out for you. And so, as a result, this AI car concept is actually a larger concept than autonomous vehicles. And that's why I didn't say autonomous vehicles. I called it an AI car. I believe this AI car will have two basic functionalities. One, drive for you. Two, look out for you. And that idea, I believe, we can put on the road tomorrow morning and it will be better for society. We do have to finish the technology. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you've announced several partnerships in the office. And so I wonder what kind of role that NVIDIA wants to play in the auto industry. Just a hardware supplier, or do you have the uh, ambition to setting a new setup about self-driving uh, by having the car vision 
new CTO one, four GMs, and other related partners to build a new ecosystem and uh, establish the new rules. Um, we're 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 just trying to solve the problem. You know, <laughs> our our plan is not nearly as 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 uh, grand as what you described. Um, uh, uh, there's we believe that there are a lot of cars. Um, in the world, and we would like to, and there are a lot of car makers, there are a lot of car services, um, there are trucks, there are shuttles, there are vans, there are buses, There's, there are automobiles of all different types, and the, so there is no one size fits all for all of them, because they, they all have different problems, like, and they have different capabilities, and in the case of the shuttle, it's geofenced, which means that, that the, the flexibility of the service doesn't have to be infinite. Which means you can you can uh, have a lot more mapping data. In the case of a branded car, a self a a uh, owner owned car, um, that car has to go everywhere and anywhere. You should be able to drive your Mercedes down downtown Bangalore as well as you could you know in Mountain View or Shanghai. And so so the the um, uh, the capabilities of that car would have to be different, and therefore its limitations because the challenges are different uh, will be different. And so. So I, I would say I would say that number one, there's no one solution that fits all. However, the computing platform for AI can be consistent. Just as every computer is different, the computing platform underneath, the processor, the operating system, the AIs, could be very very similar. And so our strategy is to create the computing platform. We call it the NVIDIA AI car platform. And this car platform would be uh, used by tier ones when they solve uh, work with OEMs. It'll be used by OEMs. It'll be used by car companies, shuttle companies, so on and so forth. Yes. Yeah. You, you showed us yesterday the um, the shield and how you connect it to the, to the Google. What do you need to do with it? Why do you call it the, the old thing? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it turns out that that Google Assistant is is quite a quite an endeavor. <clears throat> And the greatest endeavor, there's two pieces of Google Assistant. Um, uh, well, l let me say three pieces that, that's really, really quite hard to do. One of them is speech recognition and synthesis. Okay? Otherwise, understand this ASR, automatic speech recognition, and text-to-speech, right? Speech, the, the bidirectional of voice. On top of that is a layer called the natural language understanding layer. Which is, what did I say versus what did I mean? And so if I just said, open it, um, it depends on what I, what I said is open it. I could have opened anything. But what I meant is likely related to what I was talking about just previously. Okay? And so, so the, the natural language understanding part of AI is really, really complicated. And so those, that is what Google Assistant is. In the the, the back end of that is a search engine. And as you know, Google is quite good at search. And so, so I think that, that um, uh, it's not an inconsequential amount of, of capability to, to have these assistants. I also believe this. Um, when, you're using, when you're using your OK Google and you're using Google Assistant, um, you get used to the capability of that assistant. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> and so, so <laughs> don't mention it again. Don't. Exactly. <laughs> 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 don't use the G word. Yeah. The G word. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Don't use F. G and H, <laughs> and so 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 um uh, and, and so once we learn how to use a particular assistant, you know that assistant has capabilities, strengths and weaknesses, and personalities, and and over time, I think it's easy for people to to use that capability across instead of learning four or five different assistants. You know, I get used to working with the people that I work with based on just our common understanding of each other, and um, I think your your assistant's going to be the same way. And so I, I think that's a good way to, to um, yeah. yeah. You just mentioned that everything may be an AI problem and that AI problems are very hard to solve. And all the major industries in terms of AI investing heavily in the market, Google, 
Amazon, Apple, everybody. What about smaller companies? Um, what can they do? How can they keep up? How they can how can they mm -hmm, keep up? Mm -hmm. And do they own the market in the future? Are we yeah. talking about the you know the four you know big players in the market, or is there more um, more space for? This is a companies? great time for startups, and in fact, we are working with fifteen hundred startups today. Never before in the history of our company have we worked on with so many startups. This is a great time for startups. The reason why, the, it's, not, it's not completely accurate that we mean that every problem is an AI problem. It turns out that many tough problems that we've wanted to solve for a long time that <coughs> haven't been solved is an AI problem. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we've, been, we've not been able to solve it is because the perception part, the world observation part, the pattern recognition part mm -hmm. of that problem is so hard until deep learning came along, we couldn't solve the first part, which is recognizing the information. What am I seeing right now? What is happening right now? This, that piece of information is easy for a person. It's really hard for a computer. Finally, we've been able to solve that problem with deep learning. As, and once that happens, the output of that is metadata. It's just, it's, it, it's data, computer data. And now that computer data exists, we know exactly how to use that data. Okay? We know exactly how to apply a computer to it. And so, so what, we, what we're really seeing is that, that AI is solving uh, some problems that we've just never been able to solve before. Now, with respect to, to startups and who's going to win, mm -hmm. the thing that you're starting to see is that these AI platforms <coughs> are being put into the cloud. And so these perception layers, okay, once the AI is trained, it's an API. It's a voice recognition API. It's an image recognition API. Maybe there's a you know, voice synthesis API. And these APIs are sitting in the cloud. And we can connect it to our own applications. And we can write new applications. Mm -hmm. And so startups can now use all of these cloud services. Mm -hmm. It could be Watson. It could be Microsoft Cognitive Services. Right, so on and so forth. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, the main part about AI is owning the data. If I'm a startup and you know my core value is the data that I own, if I'm a small company, small industry, and if I, if I give away the data, yeah. Amazon owns the data, Microsoft owns the data, and I don't own the data anymore, yeah. how, how do you deal with this challenge? Yeah, first of all, it's, it's too, um, I know that, that people say, uh, what, what do people say, data is the new oil, or Whatever. something like that, <laughs> yeah, right? there's, always, there's, some, there's all these phrases. Um, it, it turns out, it turns out, uh, we all have our own life experiences, and that's what matters. It, it, it's not true that all of these cloud services has all the data in the world. For example, NVIDIA designs chips, and we have a lot of data about our chips. It's, in our, it's inside our company. There's somebody who, who is a fisherman. And they own a lot of data about all of the, 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 the temperature of the streams in front of their, in front of their, in front of their farm. Um, and, uh, and they own a lot of data about that area's microclimate. That microclimate data doesn't belong to Amazon. Maybe, maybe your vineyard uh, in, in France, and you have terroir, you know, and you have your own special microclimate and the, the acidity of the soil, that data only exists right there. It's not available on Google. It's your data. And so that data could be put to good use, finally. And so the way to think about that is, it is not true that everybody, everybody's data belongs to these cloud services. This is just not true. We all have our own data. And what you're going to see is because of AI, these micro businesses are going to surge. These micro, you know, these small little, little maybe it's a, it's a beer brewery. And in fact, we see people who actually brew beer now with AI. They have a lot of data about how they brew beer. It's not available on Amazon. It's not available. It doesn't belong to Google. It belongs to them. They can now use that information with an AI engine to discover some insights. Yes, sir. Um, the the <coughs> this is a good time for startups, not actually not mm -hmm. the opposite. Mm -hmm. In terms of just on that sort of who, who gets the data question, if you're looking at the shield and, and spot, do you 
see any of the kind of interaction data there and are kind of able to group those products. 